I V M. When did you last order from Amazon or Swiggy or take an Uber? And what's that got to do with the Constitution of India and Republic Day? Welcome to the show, the longest Constitution, and this one is a special one. because it's republic day and we are looking at what there is to celebrate and is it enough to wave the flag watch the republic day parade forward whatsapp messages and carry on with the day and feel proud but feel proud about what to be the world's largest democracy i think that's the only time we can legitimately be proud of our population mm, but it's not enough to be the world's largest democracy what's the point of being large if we have no depth and who is the constitution for so let's start with the two f words yeah the first f word it's in our constitution f for fraternity so liberty equality and fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual dignity which means that apart from yourself we also think about the lives of others that's what brotherhood sisterhood togetherness mean Today's episode is special because we are looking at the constitution not as tools for individuals or groups but ask where are we headed as a nation and whether we are moving away from the promises made by a constitution or not so the point about the constitution is that we have expectations and that's constitutional from our government the most powerful institutions like the judiciary and parliament Now a little bit of history. Although there were three hundred and odd members in the Constituent Assembly, it was the Core Drafting Committee which did a major chunk of work, which included men of vision like Aladdin Krishna Swami Iyer, K M Munshi, Muhammad Sadullah, with B R Ambedkar as the chairman. But of these seven, it was Ambedkar who spoke about Meta. Meta, not the new name for Facebook, but Meta. Meta is Pali or Maitri in Sanskrit, meaning goodwill, friendship. And it was Ambedkar, lawyer, Dalit leader, economist, jurist, politician, who drafted a mini constitution, which was for the people. Ambedkar's constitution, state and minorities discussed economic exploitation, social boycott, a lot of radical, far-reaching stuff. for the man and woman on the streets so our first story today is about the streets and it is symbolic for the times a time when the supreme court ordered that protests can only take place in designated spaces that's the supreme court verdict over the shaheen bagh protests in 2019 by the way imagine if gandhi was told that that is how the judiciary is now but it wasn't always pro government Once upon a time it was pro people the year is 1981 the city is bombay and on the streets of bombay are jhuggies bastis pavement dwellers and the bmc that's the bombay municipal corporation says clean up time time to evict these migrants and pack them off deport them wherever they came from but that's where meta steps in no that's where a journalist olga teller steps in and files a petition arguing that the pavement dwellers slum dwellers and in bombay to stare at the sea they are in bombay for a livelihood olga tellis argued that pavement dwellers have a right a right to a home a right to space a right to live on account of the fundamental right under article 21 and that's the core idea of fraternity it is about collectivity not just about booking that penthouse in gurgaon or alibagh and with that we get back to swiggy amazon uber the uber driver the amazon delivery person the one who is doing the real swigging across the city are are grandly called delivery partners glossing and completely hiding the horrid truth about their employment work and dignity and hear this out we now have new codes new social codes labor codes in 2019 the government subsumed over 44 laws on regulating labor including payment of wages act 1936 the minimum wages act 1948 the payment of bonus act 1965 and the equal remuneration act 1976 under a single new labor code many laws replaced with a new code You would think that some time has been spent on thinking about the people most vulnerable with the least bargaining rights in this but uh, no these were rushed through parliament with little or no discussion 
I think I take more time to brew my morning cup of coffee. And these codes affect workers' incomes, welfare, employment, social security. But the code was passed very quickly within two hours, which means under the gig economy. It sounds so cool, isn't it? Depending which side you're on is an economy driven by data aggregators like Urban Clap, Uber, Ola, Amazon, who define their workers not as employees, but delivery partners. And by referring to themselves as technology providers, these companies escape the obligations of being an employer, like giving a minimum wage, social security, health benefits, maternity leave, creches, gratuity, pension. And that's how far away we have come from our constitution. I don't think Ambedkar would have liked that at all. Quite the opposite. So if before the pandemic, parliament was pushing bills faster than an ATM dispenses cash during the pandemic, parliament just stopped working. Democracy isn't about elections but about discussions and deliberations in Parliament. And since this season is on work, let's focus on work and who is working and who is not. Following the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic in 2020, on March 23rd, 2020, both houses were adjourned. Hmm. So you work from home, I work from home, the world work from home, but our parliamentarians did not work from home. In a crisis, a national emergency is when we need our parliament to function. And for the record, globally, several legislative assemblies stayed open well into the coronavirus crisis. The British House of Commons, the German Bundestag, the European Parliament functioned. They readjusted seating plans, focused on social distancing protocols and did their work. America's Congress, in fact, enacted one of the largest economic stimulus packages in its history during the pandemic. But us? Not us, because obviously we don't have the technological support needed to assemble 500 members of parliament online. Zoom? <laughs> what Zoom? That brings us to Questioner. The daily period in both houses when members of parliament can ask questions directly to ministers was done away with. What is the government so scared of questions? And that brings us to the second F word. F of federalism. Federalism, that constitutional structure that allows for difference and autonomy. From Kashmir to Nagaland. Different people, different foods, beef and mutton, different ways of living, different ways of celebrating. But within that, we are witnessing fewer constitutional freedoms. 2020 had the most internet shutdowns in India's history, with 319 in Kashmir. And before you think, hey, that's just Kashmir, not the rest of us. Hold on. 78 in Rajasthan. 30 in UP and in other states too. Not over threats to public order, but on a few occasions because a government exam was being held. Ugh. What we need is a parliament which represents a nation. That's all of us, each one of us. The Ronak of a republic is its public. We the people. If we want to awaken to light and freedom, we need to recognize the darkness around us. The dilution of the RTI Act. The illegal use of facial recognition technology. And hold on, we don't even have a data protection law. The bill, by the way, is pending in Parliament as I speak. So, in Olga Telles versus BMC 1985, the court recognized housing rights of pavement dwellers and the ruling made it mandatory for the state to rehabilitate slum dwellers if their bastis were demolished. But that was then. So, as we wrap up today's show, think about the F-words. And the next time you get a delivery, have a conversation with the delivery partner. That's what Meta means. It's constitutional. Did you like the show? Share it with your friends. Share it with the public. Until next time, this is me, Priya Mirza, signing out. Hey, it's been another great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On Advertising is Dead, Varun is joined by Alex Dweck of NAS Academy. They discuss creators becoming educators. On Misconduct, Raghavi and Nisha look into the defamation suit against controversial actress Kangana Ranao. On Audio Gyan, Kedar speaks to industrial designer Sharad Chauhan. They discuss designing home appliances. 
On Smarter with Sid, Siddharth explains the difference between two kinds of campaigns, awareness building and brand building. And on Hans Vani, hear how two cancer patients fall in love. In the story, Grey Shades. Do follow us on social media. We're IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. Don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms you're listening to us on. And also remember, you can check out a lot of our stuff on YouTube. Go to ibmpodcast.com slash YouTube and you'll get a list of all the various channels that we do have. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Bank of Baroda and Coinswitch Coubert. Thank you so much for making this possible. Are you looking for finance products and services that can enhance your personal finance experience? Are you looking for a space to talk about your financial product or service? And are you looking for a crisp talk show where the conversation is all about money? Well, your search ends here. Hi, my name is Anupam Gupta and I'm host of the Paisa Paisa podcast. And I invite you for the conversation about your personal finance on each Monday on the IVM podcast app or the website or on any podcast streaming platforms. See you folks.